Less than two weeks into the new year, so many of us, myself included, are already chomping at the ankles for some information on HHN 2024. Even though the waters are still pretty murky, the rumor mill is always hard at work. And I do believe that there is enough evidence out there to be able to prove or disprove some of these theories. And maybe we'll even see some huge IPs that people have been asking for for years. But I'll get to those in a bit. Just remember that none of this is officially confirmed until it is. And if you want to be a part of these discussions, join my Discord server and tune in on Tuesdays for weekly rumor roundups. Now the first IP I want to talk about is something that fans have been clamoring for for years. And I'm of course talking about Gremlins celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. As much as I would love to see something like this make its way to the event, it is a Warner Brothers property and they haven't been the nicest about sharing their IPs with Universal in the past. I also think Gremlins is going to suffer from something that I call the Chucky problem. Last year's Chucky Ultimate Kill Count did a lot right with its puppetry and scares, but it was overshadowed by the other negative aspects of that haunt. People just weren't scared by puppets of a shorter stature, and Gremlins, which is another campy property, I fear will have the same issue. Especially on the Hollywood side of things, they could definitely just reskin those Chucky animatronics and make something new, but Hollywood has the resources to do that, and Orlando really doesn't invest that much in animatronics. Plus, how nostalgic really is Gremlins? Let's do an experiment. Which one of these properties in the thumbnail made you click on this video? Let me know down in the comments because because I just don't think Gremlins has a big enough pull. And with Orlando's hiccups with Chucky last year, I think it's either Hollywood only or just another white whale. Now I'm really surprised to also be hearing a lot about Terrifier. And I gotta say, this is one that I don't think will ever make an HHN in Orlando. I'm a gorehound myself, but I think Terrifier is just a little bit too far out of the realm for what would work in a haunted house environment and what would be practical to actually create. If we haven't seen something like a Giallo film like Suspiria, we won't see Terrifier at HHN. And this is the same event that pulled all of the angels from its angel versus demon haunt, The Fallen, in 2017 to avoid controversy. Sure, there's not the same religious connotations, the potential controversies outweigh the positive buzz. The other big factor comes to the fact that art is a clown. We've already got one original clown that has anchored this event for almost 25 years at this point. And why risk taking Jack's reputation over an IP that probably won't pull in big crowds? And considering we might see Jack return next year, more on that in just a little bit, I think it's unlikely to see Art make his way to Orlando. The one property I do 100% believe we are getting is Five Nights at Freddy's. Even with being released in theaters and Peacock at the same time, it was number one at the box office. The game is celebrating the 10 year anniversary this year, and Universal has an incredible working relationship with Blumhouse. In fact, Blumhouse even posted this teaser earlier this month, encouraging everyone to visit Halloween Horror Nights this year. Now they didn't specify which coast, which would mean they've gotta have a big presence at both Hollywood and Orlando, and Five Nights at Freddy's would be the headliner that could do that. It's the same demographic as Stranger Things, and if you have seen the movie, you know that it's pretty formulaic. Those story beats could be translated pretty well into a haunted house, and we've already seen in past haunts like Stranger Things 2 and the Shitty's Kids section of Slaughter Cinema that a location like Freddy Fazbear's could be done in a smaller location to great effect. I'd be willing to bet that the only reason we didn't get an announcement at the end of HHN last year is because, well, they did that with Chucky in 2022 and it obviously didn't pan out that well last year. Now besides Five Nights at Freddy's, there's only one other video game property I think has a chance of showing up at HHN this year. But first I want to run through a few of those that I've seen mentioned that I don't think are very probable. First off, despite being hugely popular and having a Blumhouse film on the way potentially next year, I don't think Dead by Daylight is in the cards until that happens. It seems to be right now when people think of Dead by Daylight, they think of all the DLC characters, a battle royale of various killers from so many different licensed properties, and trying to get the rights to all of those would just be a nightmare. Until the film comes out, Universal Universal could just make their own original haunt with similar types of characters and draw in probably just as many people. I've also seen Alan Wake 2 mentioned, I just don't see it. If Orlando couldn't juggle the scares and narrative beats of The Last of Us last year, I just don't think they could do it for Alan Wake 2. But I do think we could potentially see the return of Silent
Silent Hill. Not only is the remake of Silent Hill 2 potentially coming out this year, there's also a new Silent Hill film tentatively releasing this year. On its own, I think Silent Hill, just as an IP, has a broader reach than those two combined. I'd say this is another one that we might want to keep our eyes on throughout the next few months. Another hot that seems to be pretty much a lock is another Universal Monsters iteration. Since the monsters have come back to life in 2019, each one has had a major appearance at HHN every year since, except for Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now this is a little bit curious because John Murdy, who's basically the godfather of Hollywood's event, tweeted that he would love to do a Creature from the Black Lagoon haunt, but there just isn't the budget and resources to do it properly. And my sentiments are kind of the same. Creature hasn't been featured at Hollywood recently, but his 2019 appearance in Orlando left a lot to be desired with some pretty basic scenic design. And considering that Monster is unmasked last year, well a pretty good haunt was just kind of a reuse of tricks that we've seen in Haunted House past. I'm also not sure that I have full confidence that Orlando would be able to pull off a creature house properly. I think it's more interesting to take a look at the Dead Coconut Club for potential clues. Last year's 3D theme could signal a cheaper way to pull off Creature. I mean, it's been eight years since Chance's atrocious 3D haunt, and the monsters did have their own 3D experience way back in 1999. Either way, I feel like this one will close the chapter on the monsters for a while. That leaves the slate clean for some new legacy property to come to HHN for the years coming. Now one property that I haven't seen mentioned anywhere is Scream. Scream actually was supposed to appear at 2015's event, but due to issues with the rights, they ended up being pulled last minute and we got that abysmal purge haunt. Now do I think it's very likely that it comes to HHN? No, I don't. But consider this, Scream hasn't been favorable in the public eye recently. Between Nev Campbell getting completely shafted for good pay in Scream 6, and all of the drama surrounding Scream 7, with the unceremonious departures of leads Jenna Ortega and Melissa Barrera, as well as director Christopher Landon, everyone is rightfully pissed off. And what's the best thing you can do to have everyone just forget about that controversy? Reset the media cycle. People forget pretty easily, and it's a smart marketing move to make people remember why they love Scream in the first place especially if Ghostface makes it to both coasts. Again, I don't necessarily think anything is going to happen, but if there was ever a moment when the stars were going to align for a scream haunt, it would be right now. Another slasher icon that many have been wanting to see return to the event since 2015 is Jason and Friday the 13th. Now, after a very messy and lengthy legal battle, it was announced that a prequel series titled Crystal Lake was in development for Peacock. But as Ghostface loves to remind everyone, Jason wasn't the original killer in that film. It was his mom, Pamela Voorhees. Now while this series is expected to air sometime this year, I just want to reiterate again that the legal battles over the past decade with this franchise have been messy. Now executive producer Brian Fuller did state that everything under the scope of Jason, including going to space and going to hell, could be used for the series. That doesn't necessarily mean that all of the rights will extend to things like merchandising or Halloween events. But until things are further along in development or we actually see this series air, I wouldn't get my hopes too high on seeing it come to fruition. Now finishing up with my thoughts on a few original ideas, someone I do think we will see return this year is Jack the Clown in an epic battle versus Dr. Oddfellow. If you think about the event last year, it was kind of like a return to form, with a true icon whose presence loomed throughout the entire event. We haven't had an icon like Dr. Oddfellow since Chance all the way back in 2016. And despite the fact that Dr. Oddfellow didn't appear on any of the marketing materials, himself and the original content were getting just as much buzz as those big IPs that were plastered everywhere. And I can't recall the last time that that has happened. Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins planted the seeds last year for the Jack vs. Dr. Oddfellow battle. And with Epic Universe theoretically opening in 2025, I think a massive battle between arguably the two best icons the event has ever created will be a stellar way to close out this chapter of HHN, and maybe even plant the seeds for what we might see at HHN Vegas. But I don't think we are going to see a Poseidon's Fury haunt this year. Yes, Dueling Dragons was incredibly successful, and it managed to showcase some pretty impressive new technology that I think would work well for some of the effects in Poseidon's Fury, but I think it's just too soon
soon after the closure of that attraction. I don't feel like the nostalgia factor is quite there yet, and I think it's just too much too soon. I'd wager perhaps a couple of years down the line, but not quite yet. If you enjoyed this rumor roundup, stay tuned for weekly HHN trivia coming soon. And if you love HHN as much as I do, well, check out their best haunts ever right here.